afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, a master of propaganda, he was like defender of the fatherland. We are here to an exciting one versus one on the glacier between in the South Camp Frenchy fighting for the Soviet Union for the 20th tank corps here in hot pursuit of the German army conducting a retreat under the command here of the forcing in this air. Era Hank fighting here for the Panzer Grenadier Division Feldherrn Halle. Docton's advanced warfare shock rifle and Len Lease versus here. Breakthrough, Luftwaffe ground forces and scavenge bullets. It's a mix of infantry, armor, and some rocketry right there. And we're knowing power here. Arahang's already going off with the second storm pound here squad. And that way he's going to sort of delay the initial amount of territory he can capture. On the other hand, he will have a bit more firepower in that sense versus come French on that hand of course he could also go for Kublang which would allow him to control the battlefield a bit more early on there with his machine gun but there you go for come Frenchy there's plenty of concerts there so far marching forwards to the tunes of the motherland we've got here come Arahang going here sort of trying to secure the center at least make it a bit more you know his well a little more in his favor with a bit of part while he's sort of minimizing the amount of interest and then come Frenchy can move in through and also allow sort of Arahang to sort of more focus firepower here towards those angles here inside the town centre. Bit of early sandbagging here though from Kamfrenji, not a bad position at all. It will certainly make it a bit harder if Arahang tries to push through there. You got more conscripts on the way, and we got full scan of the here around for Arahang, of course, sort of, and I'm sort of afterwards secure more territories again. That is very much what he sort of initially sacrificed here in this fight versus Kamfrenji and Kamfrenji. Making a push, by the way, for both munitions points. Very aggressive, but of course, in that sense, even while he's just taking this, might not have it connected at all. Scan of the here where Arahang actually is. So, I mean, that's a lot there, sort of. Uh, Already figuring they got Sturm's quickly up in the building then. There we go. Both buildings are occupied by Sturm Pioneers. Constantly being pushed back there as a sort of fire flies over their heads. Schnell Dieter shoots at them, not over them. It's a bit of a shootout here. Aaron Hank, of course, can find himself. He's not careful, just bogged down here further again, delaying even more any sort of initial territory grabs here against Cam French. And there we go, constant applying pressure here. So now we're seeing Nietzsche Aaron Hank is being a bit pinned down here. The Steel Empire is caught there. The way he's sort of playing it could actually prove to be a bit against him. He's not careful. He's got more false guns here arriving. A party in saying that Kubag might actually be a good use help here to sort of quickly sort of suppress on the conscripts, giving the Steel Pioneers as well a bit more room to maneuver really and get closer to sort of do more damage. We're seeing points of secure, going for the victory point, going for the fuel point. And we got more countries there around. Of course, they can't move up here, so I mean, it's still basically around here, and here they can move in. Still on pioneers, they're not doing too much damage. There we go, though, flanking in, flanking in, looks like he's out against the victory point. Charging in, we've got more countries right here to open up the Steel pioneers. Steel on pioneers rushing in, going to flank in on the conscripts. But over here, they are rather exposed out in the open, so loss, I'm being inflicted. Still on pioneers, needs to move up, needs to move up. Still on pioneers, taking focus, fire here. Constantly did suffer some losses here. Down to four, down to three. Can't moving up, his jumps backing into the house here. More forces will be needed as part support here. Third squad on the forces then away for Arahank. He's going pretty heavy on them now. Pardon would still like to see maybe a cool run again for that suppressive firepower. Of course, he could also just wait a bit and still this force will get an MD34, which could also help. And meanwhile, come French has of a special rifle command. He's gone for a second engineer squad and he's calling in the M3A1, giving him a bit more mobile firepower. Conscripts and forces here, but so we've got forces here holding back as well. Come French pulling back. No, no, not a full retreat, not a full retreat. Hunts being pushed back here, more engineers going up here to assist the fighting. Still, Hunts moving close. Need to be careful with the approach, but there we go. Hunts are taking losses. Some very aggressive and intense infantry action in the opening minutes of the match already. Arahank has gained some territory, but still, Kampfenshi so far is definitely sitting hard on most of the map there. Still, on Pioneers with heavy losses. Engineers there taking some damage as well. Talks and falls against the Stream Pioneer. And now we're seeing a lot of casualties here, a lot of casualties. And both sides have certainly said suffered, but I think in this case, Ken might have just a bit out just a bit more. And there we go, got the M3A1, and sadly here, Arahank's not really got anything to really stop it. Nothing to really stop it, of course, Ken might have gotten just in case. Arahank got a cool line, in which case the M3A1 is a very nice counter for it, otherwise we could still apply pressure to the infantry, particularly if Arahank's got Sierra and her tank with there we go, we got the Raked Mef on the way. More folks going to see moving up. And we're noting Bowie, he has gone for Luft of the Ground Force, in which case an MG34 or 2 would be a very good choice there to sort of help him control the map and sort of make it a bit harder here for Confrenchian to move about. For example, an MG34 here would help around here in particular, since he doesn't have to worry about there. Then again, maybe here would be better, actually. Maybe a bit of more about why then. Because why he could set it up, yeah, there'd be a bit of an option here, but. That could be offset by wiring off around here. So any two trying to move out would have to actually expose themselves to the MG34 there inside the building there. 
Sam back trick there to block the entrance. Don't, didn't get finished. So basically, can't build it. He needs to shoot it to bits. Bit of a cheap trick, some might consider it. But there you go. And for him moving in the outskirts, and we got a flamethrower as well. And a Hank Shoes being pushed back here into the outskirts, of, you know, northern outskirts of the Assemble town. Shoes have been forcing it to get back. No upgrade there for the truck so far. Missing here, come Francis. He's not a territory. Still on punish. Played that. Put moving in here. We got flamethrowers on at the building base. Not necessarily the best idea. I mean, it does require that they get in with a certain range challenge. For example, the steel pipes please still deal with them at range, in particular since they won't be able to get off a lot of rifle fire. Both of them applying, applying pressure for the north. Most steel pioneers. Ken Meffer getting ready. And we got Stravniki now here for Cam French as well with their SVT 40 semi automatic rifles. And one which, by the way, the Germans basically end up copying, well, so at least using to base their own T 43 on. Fun fact. A flame through a fire there. Schultz is going to deal with Stumpy when he applying pressure from the north. Contra holding up Contra there. No Molotov, so it should be a bit safe there. No immediate attempt there to rush them out. Fuel point lost. No counter attack. Never can if not really moving up either. Entrance is charging through the northern road. There we go. We got a battle group headquarters up here for Arrowhank. Battle group headquarters healing and other support measures. And there we go. Max, he knocked out in the MP1 actually took out a few shots there. There you go. The Kedmef shoots. Scores. Well, not necessarily scores but it certainly kills something a huge wreck there lighting up the nearby scenery still having a hit there taking a few losses there but they should be able to get close enough by way. veteran to one veteran to one comes to taking losses at the same time explosion went off using a satchel charge to clear out the barbed wire there certainly some aggressive thinking there from complaints but in this case it actually worked out allowing you to sort of quickly open up there sadly though he retreated having perhaps thrown it a bit too close they need to get out of there quickly Yuri, you threw it while we're too close, you idiot! Try not to get us killed! Too much. And maybe see a grenade over here over the cover from the church walls, but now. Suppose they can take her up in the church cafe, enjoying a nice cafe latte while they're shooting communists. The Bohemian life on the Eastern Front. Support package up there, lying to spot for mines. One option here could be adding in a light infantry gun. I mean, interesting again, he's gone for Luftwaffe for ground force. We've yet to see a single MD-34, which again, I think could do a lot here. To sort of at least stall up some of Confrance's assaults and allow Arahank then to be a bit more aggressive. Because currently sort of being a bit pinned in here by the constant infantry assaults here by Confrance. It's practically human waves. Except he's not in sacrificing entire squad. He's just suffering some losses, then run off. Then he counterattacks again with another unit here and there. Basically keeping Arahank here a bit off guard. But there you go, quick in the hunt Granada flying through the air. Like it doesn't quite care being an inert object, it certainly doesn't. Engineers have been pushed away, and there we go, Russians rushing into the center, as the Russians like to rush and do. There we go, comes a bit of trouble there, being surrounded here by German infantrymen. Car 90k singing out. And there we go, two chicken flank, we got lots of flame throws, lots of flame throws. Could you wipe, could you wipe, no. Can he get away? Run Jürgen, run and he does it! Contact, Again, lack of MD-34 here of course, Martin now setting up for some fudge makers instead. Some more elite infantry to support the Feldherrnhalle. Mine's going down there, Gute's Arbeit. Uh, Gute Arbeit. This is it. Of course, that's not what the Russians are saying. No further check up here from Kampfrenchy so far. Our Hank's only struggling a bit. And you're going against the Fultz going to deal it. There you go, Fox Amigas are available now here for Arahek to call up to the front line and to lend some support. Veteran 2 1 here. If you get to Veteran 2, that should certainly be a good start. There you go, Country at 12 there, assault rifles firing away. The Sturmgewehr, so named by the Führer himself. Although the development of the assault rifles certainly had a lot of hiccups and certain other. Bits there as the Fury initially actually worked against it, being rather convinced the car 98k was quite enough, though that was actually a rather common thing when it came to, well, most sort of rifle developments. Usually, of course, they shot faster than the predecessor, for some reason, most generals always thought was a bit silly, it just would be too near ammunition waste. The current they've been pushed back there, infantry assault there, Fudge makes holding up the Stravniki, MP4 to up, and there goes the there go, forced away, sort of forced away. Come Fenty, they're retreating quite rapidly, and so he does suffer two heavy losses, and Zit can have it healed up rapidly. we got a tank over tank coming up there, so we've got armor soon on the way here for Come Fenty, we not really got much. 
I suppose one desperate maneuver could be trying here for a Yak Panzer IV. Comes to the taking loss of the steel on Punila, almost 52, almost 52. Not quite there. Another option, of course, would be an infantry plan, but again, I do think some infantry 34 would be good. And again, would allow him to keep Confinci's infantry a bit more at arm's length. Confinci, by the way, has gone for advanced warfare, opening up for submachine guns, the PPH 41, conscript repair kits, T 35s, and even some strafing runs, and of course, radio intercept, listening into the Fairtan Highlands communications with divisional headquarters. Hardsmeg is creeping about. Our Hank's only struggling here in the fuel department. Lots of interest here, folks. Grenadiers and Stuart Pani's only other conscripts. Bring the centre bit open. More but why also mines it would actually be I think a very good idea. Who's a single panther trick handed out there to Fox? We've got Fox to think about here, the engineers. Quickly sending them running there with rapid FT42 fire. Almost got the engineers there, almost, but not quite. And there you go, T-70 light tank rolls up here. Through the frozen fields in the east of the town. The Bade Lanung Matwag out here. Lots of Russians pushing up. And there we go, there we go. Blows up, but doesn't actually do much. And I can have to deal with the armoured threats. Uh, Hank clearly not going, having otherwise much to sort of deal with it. Fuel pod here secure, but not for long. Academy of Hector being used to that. You can see there's a bit of a sense of desperation there, maybe to Arrow Hank's action when he's using a Academy of far off to secure territory. And he's there suffering some minor losses. Right flank again, lost here to the Russian Scourge. And there you go, we got a additional Academy of Hector arriving. And looks like something finally got wiped there. Some engineers failed to make it to safety. Been cut down here by German infantrymen. Just don't need to be careful there with that T-70. A few good fire hits from that 45 mm gun. And they definitely won't be singing Deutschland, Deutschland über alles later in the evening. Good man engaging a constant engaging from range there's some machine guns. I said going to the advantage of the false gun of these virtually two T70 they're firing on the false gun, the false gun firing back when neither quite hitting the target. They go rushing in, rushing in, but all taking losses there. Because they're flanking in there, the constant there won't be lasting too long. T70 the joints and they might turn the target here. Go. Constant they're still taking damage it. And there we go, Marty White, they might see wipe. Can see Flick make it? Yes, yes, he does make it. At the same time, constant they're opening up. T-70 flanking him, there's only a Pantrick there, but he could quickly focus it down, maybe forcing away. Pantrick hits, but there's Fulton, there's are taking heavy loss at the same time. We've got two Raked members moving up here from the north. T-70 falls back, and here come Flenty. Perhaps I'm not entirely sure if he actually saw, but either way, sensing perhaps things are getting a bit nasty. Could have the potential to be getting nasty there. Still not turning the game back, a few point again, no MG-34s. I can't help but feel that's a bit of an interesting overlap, oversight there from Arrowhank, considering the doctrine he's gone for. I mean, most people tend to get an MG-34 at the very least, I think. Those would actually done quite a bit of good, and then sort of holding up Confrenchy. And now he was actually in good foresight for Confrenchy. He's actually building up fuel catches, building up a further fuel advantage in the longer run. I mean, this is clearly a part of a strategy that's going to involve arm and vehicles to a certain extent. I mean, he's got bullets here for the regular T-34 and 6 and increased penetration there. So, I mean, he's clearly going to aim for some tanks. And there you go, another satchel charge here from the Stravniki. Blowing apart a single house there. Again, we're rolling back. We got a second truck here. He could try and set up a spare punch at quarters, though. I would suggest setting up around here, around the fuel point, sort of help cover it and make it a bit harder to harass. Of course, have to see what he goes from. We actually see a support beam company up here for Confrench. He's actually going for three buildings here. So after we've gotten that, maybe some arm that he's getting up some support weapons now. That's some rather aggressive strategic thing in there from Confrench. Not bad though, not bad. He's probably worried about something Arahank could be pulling up. And of course, in that regard, you know, a field gun or maybe some mortars could actually be quite a good counter to that. So, good thinking there, good thinking. Arahank needs to regain that fuel. And there we go. He's getting a Yak Panzer. He is getting the Yak Panzer 4 of a 70. So technically, the ones with the high velocity gun were actually just known as Panzer 470s. 
the Yacht Panzer actually was part there, but he was part of a, well, basically, misdirection effort to make the enemy believe that they actually managed to fit the regular Panzer for the well, same gun as the Panther. I'm not entirely sure if they actually bought it, but it was certainly not impossible for them to get sort of at least some of them imagine it. So, little fun fact there. Tisa needs to be careful, they got a camera, that's just X flying there against it. Yak Pants almost done, Yak Pants almost done. Steel Pan is in trouble, he's trying to get it at the same time, Kevin Pants in trouble. Snap Niggy Mac cleared out, Steel Pan is opening up there. Satchel charge off, Steel Pan it, Spike and it! Good lord, that was. Had they not been delayed there by the Strafni, I think they could have run into that Salto charge. There you go, T-70 knocked out here, small victory for the Fatherland as one T-70 is blown apart. Also a bit there to salvage. Kamfenji is being very aggressive here with his Satchel charges, he's being very aggressive. Another support package here by the way for Arahank. So both of them have them just in case they need it. We've got a half track on the way up, Confenching, so he can reinforce the front line. Field gone on the way as well. Yak Panzer is ready though at the moment. It's not actually going to have too much people except the half track, which is going to make it not the best choice there for our Hank at the moment. A tag up probably would have been better. At least with the spare punch quarters around here. Maybe the set in for a Panther throwing in some orbital done. Meanwhile, we got a nice flank from the Steel Pioneers. Could see some wipes here, maybe folks. No! Conscious man to get away there! Cheeky there by Confenci, but he managed to pull it off, he manages to pull it off. Stone Pony is closing in and Vetri feels he can hit that, so it's going to be slightly better since he can get concussive grenades. Plus one, but he Vetri three, Vetri into four, and Vetri into five does tend to follow a bit more swiftly after. Conscious there, quickly run off as well, bit of a mix of rifles, submachine guns, and other bits. Yak Pants are pulling back there, having pretty much bugger all to do since it lacks any ability to do with infantry, even a machine gun upgrade would have done it some good. Folks, because there's far too many saying the engineers running. Field promotion. Half check about there could come finish. You can sit up here with the AA mount. That will certainly happen further versus all the infantry that Air Hank has. In fact, that's largely what it has. We've got some support with the Kevin, but that's it, really. Shoot up there, and maybe the cookout. And go quick, your fault is bursting into flames. The great coats bursting into flames. They come past from hitting with the stuff. Nikki has to charge off here. There. Oh, Yuri did not make it out of that one. Yuri did not make it out of that one. Too slow. Half tech knock her yak panther charges forward, crashing through the walls. The masonry, though, it's merely made out of biscuits. Volksmen, they will need to retreat, they're basically outgunned. Steel Pioneers are also rapidly relocating to a slightly less Russian position. They were seeing more aggressive play now from Arahank, he's sort of trying to push back Confluency and he's having a bit more success, though they are a bit limited. The Yak Panzer is obviously not having so much luck in that direction so far. So and again, a spare punch of course, I think would have been a better choice at that stage. And again, around here would actually have been a very good position to cover the fuel point, maybe around the victory point just a bit. It would have given Arahank that way a bit more to work with. And could also allow him maybe to be faster on a path towards a panther. Truck knocked out there, but uh, not so much knocked out. It's further wrecked here by a panther in the hands of Dieter. Position secured. Unit holding. Good and ready. Yeah, Panzer they're rolling about. With its high velocity gun, which see actually was actually too big for the oh yeah, Panzer. And it actually had a risk of tipping over into the ground, which could actually lead to some further difficulty they didn't get cleared out, which could always cause the gun to blow up. So there were some issues with the Yak Panzer in that regard. In fact the SU one hundred had the exact same issue. He's actually using it to try and deal with the infantry, which certainly again highlights the desperation there from Arrowhank at the moment. Storm Pine is bringing up the closing of the veteran. If we get them there again, that would help him, that would help him. I mean, having extra grenades here would certainly be helpful too if they can stun up a larger force that's attacking. Almost got them. 
There we go, veterans who freely match the Indian is wiped out there. Looks like Kamfrenji is not paying attention. There we go, a small wipe against him. Another touch of chatting. We've got Blenko was actually burning away at the Strafniki. The Blenko basically being a chemical mix that will acidic. Sort of put it mildly, not very pleasant stuff. Got a T-3045 here rhyming though. Field gun caught off on a bit on its own. Again, my fleet reacts the same with the Yak Panzer. His right flank has been rather woefully guarded here. We've got Kantz running up. They've got Stone Pies running up again. Of course, he's got the Vegetable 3 here. I mean, a good stun grenade here versus the Conscript Smart Call to stop to them. Field guns here ready to deal with the Yak Panzer. T for Falls moving up. There you go. Will the action hang attention over here? Will he try to get up the Kazu grenade again? That could basically be the difference here between win this engagement or not. For our Hank, though, is quickly getting towards Vex and Thor, which again is going definitely going to get the sort of the good positions. Oh dear, retreated, they retreated. Again, had he gone for a concussive grenade, I'm pretty sure he could have won that. Anyway, he's got the T-Fed 5 moving ahead. Yak pants up, I can move moving up. Interesting enough, he's not trying to sort of get off some hits there against it. Despite being a very easy target there, we got the figures guns now ready to actually cut off any attempt there by the Yak pants to hunt down the T-Fed 45. Nothing further going on in the base though. Maybe a maximum of mortar here for come Frenchy. Of course, we might try and save up for some more armor or another half track. For our Hank, we've got the Schwerer Panzer quarters going up, Fudge and Megas reinforcing as well. Bit of quiet here. And it is time here for the mid-game analysis. Currently chasing the Hank has pushed out here more aggressively since sort of the early game. But there's still problems. He's still having a hard time holding territory in that regard. Again, I do feel like the MG34 is in some good position. I think he should get two, set up one around here, then another one around here. That would sort of create a zone of control around here that's going to require more effort for Comfrenchy to break through. Maybe have a Ken for nearby sort of support. Then you could sort of try and break through and try to make more pushes towards the enemy fuel and try to cut that off from come Frenzy. I think otherwise his next goal should be trying to aim for a Panther, maybe throw in some Orbisodan now for the two MG-34 so to find some further fire support. Orbisodan with an MG-34 I think could actually do quite a bit, bit of good there versus come Frenzy's troops. Maybe bleed out some of them, in particular the penal troops there with the flame throws actually going to be a major threat there to our Hank's infantry since flame throws pretty much don't care about your level of veterancy at all. So if you can do that there might be a good chance there for our Hank to break through and sort of deal with this. For Kamflenti, another fuel cache might be an idea, but otherwise, you know, mortars and maxims, you know, try and bombard some of all of Arahank's positions, sort of trying to hammer in his infantry. Mortars could also be used to lay down smoke screen to sort of negate some of the weapons here Arahank has in possession. Otherwise, I mean, Kamflenti just needs to keep up what he's doing, trying to keep up the pressure, trying to keep Arahank pinned down as the Orbital Commander of SMB. Keep doing that. That should give Kamflenti a good chance sort of pulling through more t 35 in the longer run would also be a good choice, more armor, and that way he could then sort of quickly swarm the Yak Panzer and knock it out in short order, unless Arahank sort of keeps it properly supported. I mean, he could also go for some T-70 to sort of help deal with the infantry, but I think another T-35 initially would be a sort of good move, then he could follow up with the T-70 to sort of help keep pressure on the infantry. But, let's return to the fight. Mama off there. A lot of people have died right around that spot there. Very close to Vetsin D4. 22 kills. They've definitely done their part there for the Fatherland. Other Stuart Pioneers are still some time away. Panzer's running about there. Sadly, they lack any grenades to sort of flush out the conscripts. Ooh, nice grenade here against the Slavnik. Almost got the entire lot wiped. Fatsumik is moving to the north. T-35 opening up, Yak Panzer turning up there and firing its hybrid as a gun, getting a hit down the T-35-5. Still Pines pushed away, there's a constant charge forward and again. All of this is actually exposed, I mean none of this can actually deal with the infantry that could move in and actually swarm the academy for the the Yak Panzer. And he's actually getting another T-70, bit unexpected there, bit unexpected but of course would work against the large infantry force here we see from our Hank, we're getting almost started as well. More veteran fans are going to be in there. We've got counter charging, clearing away the Raketen efforts. In fact, we could see we actually see the Yak Pants being split off there from its security, from its escorts. And we got a strength from there, 
there though. I do think there might have been this click there from Kamfenji. Doesn't act end up doing much. And then gets shot down. Landing right out of the edge of the map there. So that's basically been an unfortunate waste for me. She's there for Kamfenji. Nice hit on the fox gonna be is. Four kills there, and we got the orbs done up here for our Hank. Deutschland. And there we go, Lightus Machine and Gewehr going up. There you go. Fox makes in trouble now. And yeah, Punch coming from the field gun. Good hit there from the gunners. Fedorov pleased with his marksman skills there with a really big gun. Anti-tank grenades there on the way. Yak Pan's in a bit of trouble. They got Kunz coming up with anti-tank grenades. Yak Pan's pulling back here. And Fox has got to do with the conscripts. Grenade here. Maybe some Lenko would work up with the team. Time getting hit there by the T-70. Ken Rev's not set up here quickly now. The Yak Pan's actually a bit isolated there from any sort of support there, which could allow it to be up maneuvered easily. Fox is trying to get off a Panda Fox, but it might be the end. That might be the end there. They're actually free, but they're very close to death. They're very close to death. Can he get off another hit before he gets hit by anything? And there you go, Fudge Maker swap, he lost the T-70, but Veteran the Fudge was there, wiped out. Field gun though, cleared out at the same time though. That could work out for Comf... No, wait, for Arahang actually. If you grab that, turn that against Comf that would be good. Comf there moving ahead here. And to tank grenade against the Yak Pants, failed to penetrate. There you go, lots of two flying up, got the t fed of rushing in there to assist. The Ken Rev getting up hit, now the t fed of as well. Coming from the other side, Infra getting swept to the sides here. And there you go, Yak Pants moving ahead here. Arahang trying to see on the opportunity, comes into the line of fire with the field gun, and allows the t fed of to get close. And that's out maneuver maybe. There you go. One hit went through there, one hit went through. Yak Pan's almost knocked out, but the T-Fed not really good to help either. Got a kidnap moving up there. T there we go, Yak Panzer got knocked out. He might lose the T-Fed but he got the Yak So that cost is definitely going to be a lot more painful to Arahank than he was to come flinchy due to the overall larger full advantage there, but of course also the fact he's not suffering a few disadvantage. So that was definitely quite expensive there for Arahank. Now currently our Hank has basically only the infantry left. Only the infantry left. Of course Camp French is as well, but he can quickly get out more tanks though compared to our Hank. I mean Arahank could of course try and play a full looks, but that would further limit that like dis well, disadvantage in favour and more tanks running for Camp French. Of course Camp French with this more fuel would very quickly then be able to bring any tanks that would cause the looks some problems, so it's a rather yeah, tricky situation here. We got some more concerts though to replace the ones lost, getting some machine guns. We got another T70 here for Comfrenchy. And there you go, veterans who forced you and Punila with 27 kills. Then <laughs> Beaver Vice doing quite well there with his squad. And their assault rifles. Definitely should not be taken lightly then. There you go, 28 kills. Hardened killers. Some French troops are making another run here for the center victory point. Victory point wise, though, our hack is quite far behind there. Come Frenchy. Another T-70 arriving. Almost got to feel on the other Stuart Pioneers. We got Fox being handed down by Strafniki and Angry Conscripts. And another fuel cache here from Comfrenchy, another fuel cache. So he's definitely further aiding his own goals in the longer term. Good, good. So I'm even up there to deal with the Fox there with the flamethrowers and SMT 40s. Burning away at the Fox Gun, he's got Fox Gun flying in from the north as well. Catching with a bit of a crossfire here, though he's got some cops who's cooking up to fight support. If you so fancy, so of course the T 70 is also quite the option. Also on the move in there, go Country running straight into that LMG 34. Already 11 kills are there, already 11 kills, 12 kills. Of course, then trouble with the T 70, we could see what maybe. At the same time, the country just getting absolutely massacred. Down to one man, there we go, a wipe, a wipe. Against Arahank, something we hit, get the opposite on the continue to kill. 15 kills, the problem is 16 kills, but keeps at it. There we go, actually 17 kills even. Got another strafing run here available for Camp French, though of course you could use it for something else. Some mines would work out. Yes, 
more folks gonna do this? He could also consider maybe instead more Opus Soldaten with more light machine guns instead of more folks gonna do this. I mean, again, that would apply more firepower again. MG 34s, I think, would also be a good choice. Keep your heads down. The bitch is first one the way there. He could actually, I think, hunt him down here with the T70 for some reason. That seems like here comes Flinch. He's not pursuing them, allowing them to escape. Now, that's definitely, I think, a miss there by Come Flinch. That could also been a massive blow right there to Arahang. I mean, those two umpires right now are probably one of his most important units. And particularly, getting the Tibetan 5 they they're going to be some absolute crack leap assault troops there. They can definitely tear apart a lot of Come Flinch's troops. They should not be taken lightly, plus they could also repair any tank rather fast as well, in particular to the support package. Field gun bombarding, and good lord, he's cleared up both the Kenman there. Arahank had left them too close there, and in this case he got punished here with an absolutely devastating field gun barrage. And he recruited one, then he cleared it out again! My god, that was absolutely... Crushing blow right there, delivered to Arahank. Very well executed field gun barrage there. I mean, in the area there was rather close proximity, to both came up too close to each other. I mean, that was definitely some nicely timed barrage. And there we go, T7 taking advantage of it. Basically, ensuring right here, Arahank, he can't recover them. He needs to get up some pantrix to force away the T70. In the meanwhile, he could steal or take that, or do something else with them. There we go, steals one like Kenmerfer. You got orbs on, you got steel on pioneers, but you can't do anything against the T70. Got no anti tank weapons, they need to wait for the Fultz gonna deal with the Pantus Rex to move up there and force away that damnable light tank. So many dead German infantrymen, though. And there we go, the Kenwev recruit. Whoa, satchel charge! Wiping out the Kenwev! Wiping out the Kenwev! Absolutely fiendish right there by Kam Frenchy. Fiendish! Leaves a little sliver of hope then for Arahank and then blows it apart with a satchel charge. I'm sure he's making Comrade Stalin proud. And there you go though, Arahank though might be able to turn the tables. He's got the Panther on the way, Panzer Kampf, Fagen Fünf. There might be a sliver of hope there, Kampf Fünf is close to call another T-3045 though. And he's acting more violently here with the field gun, he needs to sort of directly shoot at it and he's attack ground with it instead, so he can knock it out that way. Foxes, your attack from him. We've got the Veteran 4 moving up. Halfway towards Veteran 5. T7 drawing in here as well. Mana assault here. Count skips under fire. Still on Pioneers flanking in. And they're going to do some T5 arriving for the 20th tank corps. And there you go. Veteran 4 still on Pioneers in charge against the conscripts. No concussive grenades here. And there you go, just tearing apart those conscripts. Absolutely lethal right there. I mean, again, if you can get Storm Pioneers up to a high level of veterancy, they are absolutely excellent troops there with their assault rifles. Absolutely excellent and should not be underestimated. But again, the trick is, of course, to get them to veterancy 4 and 5, which generally tends to be quite the challenge. There you go, Panzer Kampfang from the immobilized. Feldhand Ali was able to spare one here for the rear guard. Maybe the overall army call was. And there you go. Veterans in five, veterans in five. They're alone. Health over they go. Panther again. Gems on an anti tank grenade. T70 escapes here. T70 escapes. Need to quickly repair that Panther. Need to quickly repair it. Of course, these veterans five still unpunished with the support packs. So there's your proper put it away there. Deep out are coming apart from the Panther. Panther X need to be get up there. Good hits there. T Fox Man Game got a field gun sitting up here to flank the Panther as well. More Pantrex in need. We got Storm Pods retreating. Other Storm Pods need to move here as soon as they can. Except they're too busy killing the field there. There you go. T Fox Man down, but he might lose it. He might lose the Panther. Orbsland could try and lay down the smoke screen instead here with the blend curve up. But looks like the Panther will escape. Damn close though. Damn close. And they took heavy losses there from Flame Pro Burst there from the. Stuff Niki, there we go, blend cover on retreat path, and they actually moving through it, they're moving through it, getting caught there in the acidic cloud. Constant moving up there, Fortimac trying to get off some grenades here. From the weakened Russian troops. Storm Pun is actually pulling back here to retreat. We got more fight smakers around here, quickly infiltrating behind them. Might see the fight smakers get the opposite uh, Stuff Niki here. 
Except he's not targeting them down, he's not targeting them down, he's focusing on everything else. They go T-70 on the Fox Almost 22 and then the T-70 light tank. Comes with a bit of trouble. So the folks gonna do is actually. We got a Kenma who moving up here, creeping up under the Confrenti's command. Sergeant Boris bravely leads his anti-tank crew up there to home maybe hunt down some fascist tanks. We've seen that to pull back further. Still on Panis here, couldn't get that Panther back in the fight. And as soon as he can, he should get in there. Field gun, they're coming him. He almost got the fudge makers wiped already. Quick field gun bows. He's going to try and wipe them or retreat. Or not. It looks like he's just combining, but that's not really the effective way to knock it out. Using Kunst with their to repair. Good drop there, good drop there. McKed Method has moved up, might maybe a bit too close there. And we got the Storm Pine here providing support. With support packages, though, again, at least keep the veterans you fire without it, so again, they can take full advantage of this VA accuracy bonus alongside their assault rifles. Good hit in the Panther, though, good hit on the Panther from the field gun flank exposed. They're not entirely sure why Confrenti is. Oh, Arahank's breaching him through like that. Orbs are done, is there. Panther opens up, still on Pine Heath gets supporting. And again, take away the support packages. Take away the support, the Minesweeper. T-70 might get knocked out here. Damage engine again on the Panther. Orbs are knocked out here. They're out now for the easy targets. There you go, T-70 almost knocked out. Needs to get the field gun away as well. Again, I'm not sure why he's not putting away the Minesweeper though. And there you go, turning it against it, turning it field gun against the rear of the Panther. Up close, actually, too. Can he get it? Can he get it? There we go. Still the Panther 70 damage, got more infantry charging forward here, under Confrenti's command. Still on plan, he's here, turn against them. And pop a concussive grenade. Concussive grenade. That can stun them up and make them easier targets for a bit there. Still on plan, he's going to their first kills. Oh, they retreated, retreated, not in a concussive grenade. He needs some more infantry. He's trying to deal here with a field gun, which is good. But still, there's one from here. This stuff. Nigi could get off a set charge anytime soon there. T-35 on the way there. He needs to rush up infantry. Oh, field gun recruit! Got to point is arriving. They also need to put away the minesweeper. Time to get that field gun. A Kedmap has joined up. There we go, Vetchin is on these two pioneers. A Kedmap for there. A bit of a problematic thing. And there we go, Satchel charge against the Panther. Almost knocking it out there. Almost knocking it out. Grenade here against it. A Kedmap for T-345, number three, moving up there. Panther won't be enough to stop it. Kenneth is still firing, and there you go. T-35 flanks with Panther and shoots. Panther abandoned. A dreadful loss. There's 53 points left for Arahank. He's got some very elite infantry again. The veteran five still pioneers. He's got some almost actually like three orbital down as well, but he's lacking in armor. And the flame first is uh, making short work of his very elite troops. The 27 kills on those penal troops. Quick Panther fast there from Frederick. Frederick got, knocking out the engineer for the time being. Might have to knock out the Panther and show it does fall back into the hands of the Germans. There you go. Fine from the safety of the building there. Gaining a bit to fall, but then running out in the streets again, making himself easy to target. Contest moving up there. Engineers moving up to support. Sent to Port there being secured briefly before the Orbsline quickly forced them away there. This is not machine gun fire there, cutting through as many Russian infantry as you can. There we go. 34 kills, Veteran T3. Small arms fire. And Veteran T5 still on Pioneers, doing what they can. Concussive grenade, come on, don't forget the concussive grenade. 39 kills, 40. 41, 42. The meaning of life is Veteran T5 still on Pioneers. Wait, no, it isn't. But it might be a pretty good answer. Anyways, Contras there pushed away. Ah, uh, Hank, no, I'm holding on. <laughs> More explosions going off. They're killing a few folks, gonna do is. But what can he get? There's not really a lot of options left here for Arrow Hank. I know they can have. I mean, he could suppose to try and throw out a Luxit or try and deal with infantry. Leave maybe the T-35 there a bit unsupported. That could maybe work a bit. Cooper holding. Question is, what are we holding? There's not exactly a lot left of this area. 
Not even to cafe. No way to cafe still standing. It's surprisingly unscathed. So probably communist collaborators. This is what we're trained for. One option causes now Arrow Hank tries to use make use of heavy fortification, trenches. He actually could have used trenches earlier, I think. Flak emplacements could also work out. Maybe some tank traps. I mean there have been a lot of options there. Uh, he's salvaging the field gun instead of making use of it. Oh, he's repairing it first. Repairing it first, actually. That's good. That's good. Actually. Is he actually going to use the orbs on crew? No, no, he doesn't even start. He then just leaves it for the enemy to take again. Supply sector under attack. Going for the final victory point. Then we've got the T-35 moving up there. Davis heading here against the orbs on most. Marked the entire unit. Then up there. Go ahead. It's the T-35. Fox is giving up a minor hit there as well. Can't skip charging forwards, lots of engineers as well. A large assault here from the remnants of the eastern outskirts. Still no concussive grenades. Still no concussive grenades. I really do think our hand will benefit from those. Now you cheated, the Kenneth has also cheated. And there you go, Arahank ends up surrendering. Game over there, a loss to Arahank, a victory for Confrenchy. The retreat was not able to delay the Soviets for very long. And the overall larger division might then be in trouble. There you go, game over. Part here of the best out of three matches between Arahank and Confrenchy, by the way, which are covered on my streaming channel. In the end, though, Arahank did win. So, a little fun fact with this was basically Confrenchy's victory, and overall, pretty interesting fight there. I mean, he was really able to keep up the tempo quite, tempo quite nicely, keep pressuring Arahank, make good use of vehicles, infantry, and so on. Flamethrowers definitely played a good role there in actually negating a lot of the veterans' bonuses. The Germans do tend to accrue over a battle. I mean, Flamethrowers care nothing about that. They can quickly sort of make short work there, so that was really good. They could maybe benefit from another Strafniki unit with a Flamethrower. Good use of vehicles sometimes. Tank handling could maybe have been a bit better, but overall, make good use of their minds as well. Our hangar felt like, you know, lacked some elements to try and control and dictate the flow of the battle a bit more. I mean, surprisingly, went for Luftwaffe, probably never saw any MD-34, so I think that was one of the mistakes alongside of a sort of lack of Kruger wagons. And the Yak Panzer, again, just really did make much sense there. So, I mean, and he'd probably gone for a faster Schwer Punch, of course, again, around 10, maybe for check the fuel pump a bit better. I think Arahank would have had a better chance of actually winning this fight, but there you go. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, want to subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. If not, you know, send in replay and I'll find some feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Engine. Cheers, and thank you all for watching. Bye!